A four stroke model internal combustion engine. This is part four. Back in the workshop of my friend Andrew, after he fixed the propeller mounting and fitted the carburetor using a new fuel tank and the power panel shown previously, with renewed enthusiasm, once again we try to start the engine. Warning, viewer discretion advised. This video really is extremely boring. It starts off okay but goes downhill rapidly. Here is the engine firmly clamped to Andrew's bench and with a thick piece of silicone rubber tubing secured to the inlet manifold and the carburetor using a couple of substantial hose clips, this connection is now assumed to be airtight. I'm opening the needle valve four turns, which should be about right. I would adjust the needle valve to its running position once the engine is running. I bought this, it is a super deluxe totally transparent fuel tank. The previous fuel tank that we used fell apart because it was very old, it just disintegrated. And a previous attempt at starting the engine using Andrew's fuel tank wasn't good either. This large 500 milliliter fuel tank cost me 20 pounds, worth every penny to rule out fuel supply problems. Before connecting the glow clip, first of all we're turning over the engine to make sure it sucks the fuel in and it doesn't. The good thing with this fuel tank being transparent is we could see the bubbles being blown back into the tank from the carburetor. By manually rotating the engine in the opposite direction it did suck some fuel into the carburetor. When we tried the electric starter again, as per usual, despite Andrew taking the time to make new parts, they are still no good. On most of this video there is a live audio track which up to now has been muted. In this clip I'm having a word with Andrew about the tension of the drive belt, which was very loose indeed. It needs to be that tight, it was far too slack before, and it won't break, I mean to, to break that theoretically, it's the same sort of stuff that's on racing engines, and they, they generally don't break much. No. Four strokes are notorious for, as you, as you fire them, they'll backfire, go pop, and then suddenly they're running in reverse. Oh, I'm with you, right? And, and they'll run in reverse and they'll throttle up in reverse. So that's what we've got with this. After those few words of wisdom, based on my experiences, Andrew reset the timing slightly. To be honest, though, I think it's 180 degrees out of phase, but what do I know? I'm just a poor musician who builds and repairs steam engines. And as far as model steam engines go, I am a bit of an expert, I suppose. I have a comprehensive collection of miniature glow engines, not unlike this one, but mine work. A lot of my internal combustion engine collection was bought from John Mills, who has a YouTube channel called Double Boost. In the near future, I think I will run a few of them. But for now, it's back to this one. The engine is definitely sucking fuel now into the carburetor. When I put my finger over the end of it, the engine note changes and it actually does start to fire very slightly. I would like to mention though, we are running the engine in reverse. The polarity of the starter motor has been changed around on the power panel. This is good for two reasons. One is, I do believe that the timing of this engine is set for it to run in a clockwise direction and also by running in a clockwise direction the propeller doesn't fly off. I can see smoke. Yeah, I can. Four out, give it plenty of fuel. That's exhausting better, that is. It's blowing back through the cab. No, it's the other way, because it's blowing back. Yeah. Andrew had fitted a silicone rubber o-ring around the glow plug. 
I suggested that this was removed so the engine was returned to the as per drawing state. Generally speaking, you would use a copper washer, not a silicone o ring, on the glow plug. As can be seen in the previous clip, it is actually trying to run. It's popping a bit. It's sucking fuel. Keep going. Sucking. Andrew and I spent about three hours doing this, and eventually the 7 ampere hour battery went flat, the one that powers the starter and the glow lead. As it currently says on screen, if there are any real experts out there watching this video and know exactly what the problem is with this engine, please contact Andrew directly and tell him. Please do not contact me, I do not need to know. Andrew's YouTube channel is called Model Engineering Adventures. Please contact Andrew via YouTube. What is wrong with this engine, I ask myself. One is, it doesn't have much compression at all. And two, the question is, is it the piston ring or is it the valve at the top that's causing the lack of compression? I think after this episode, there will be one more. Andrew's going to add a second piston ring and mess about with it a little bit. If there isn't a part five in this series, then you will know that we both failed. The good news is my friend Andrew is about to build a Stuart 7A steam engine, and that should be fine. That is it for this episode owing to the fact that the smell of methanol and nitromethane is making me feel a bit weird. I must mention, though, it was better once we reversed the rotation of the engine because all the fumes were blown towards Andrew. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.